probably similar questions to last week with Darcy mm. and, and Jordan Degay. Look, like they got through okay. Today. Yeah, and Coxie got through well. Um, as I said, I stood here um, <clears throat> last week and told you that Jordy was going to play because he got through training. So I might hold my fire until we get the feedback from how the boys are pulled up and and we um, get an extra couple of hours to finalise the squad this over. Just on Mason Cox, so he's available for selection. Do you, do you think it's likely that you'll send him for a week in the VFL, given how Ben Reid's been playing? No, he got through training. I don't know if he's available for selection yet, so we'll take that extra couple of hours and pick the team after that. Sharon Burke, coming back in the VFL. Yeah, Good news. yeah, so it's been... Um, yeah, oh, it's, it's a long journey for you know for a bloke like Shaz who's you know hasn't played as much footy as he would have liked to over the time but you can't do anything about what's gone and he's been pretty uh, pretty good at coming back to today and what he's in control of and what he can impact so these are good days when um, or good times when you get to the end of a, a rehab and a recovery especially long ones and and um, players get the opportunity to get back and play which is what they love to do so yeah he's, uh, Shaz has had his fair share of um, trials and tribulations through the whole through his um, playing career um, but he's a much loved member of the, of the of the team of the club and you yeah, know we're looking forward to, to him sort of getting started again this weekend. Daniel the VFL playing good footy at the moment um, yeah obviously the depth is good but are you pretty keen to get them around at some point? Um, I will continue to pick our best sides week by week, but yeah, as we know, with form and injury and the, the opposition that you're facing at any given time will ask for something slightly different. So, um, yeah, we have, you know, Isaac Quain has been continually strong. Uh, Josh Dacos put in a, has put in a good block of form the last two or three weeks. Braden Sire as well, returning from injury, has been um, putting his hand up more and more. Uh, ben Crocker has been really consistent. You know, through the whole year really um, and has continually been around the mark. Max Lynch is, is putting his hand up as well as a, as a young ruckman and, and starting to step up. So we've got, um, and I'm sure I would have missed a couple, but we've the, the VFL are performing better. So it's um, you know, after a slow start for the year, we're, we're sort of starting to see an upwards um, trend with, with the way that we're playing footy at that level and the individuals within it um, are pretty keen to take their chances when they come, as we saw with, with Rupert Wills, you know, Reedy, you know, Jack Madgen last week, you know, come up and play your role when it's when it's your opportunity. A few weeks ago you spoke about that opportunity that Ben Reid was presented with and at yeah. some point you are going to have a decision to make when Mason yeah. does become available. Um, do you think you're going to change that, that set up up forward? Are you pretty comfortable with the amount of tools that you've you've got up there? Yeah, the, the short answer is don't know. Um, you know, when all when all three are up and about, our tools that is, you know, we'll we'll um, we'll consider that. But at the same time, as I said, it was just Max Lynch has been playing well in the in the twos, uh, mainly as a ruckman, but he's he's had a bit of forward work as well. Um, we've got to balance up that aerial capability with with some ground level hunt, speed with size, you know, and and our forward line has largely worked well for us. Um, and Reddy's done well since he's come in. Coxie's obviously a you know a really strong um, contributor in that area, as is um, you know Brody Mychek. So the short answer is yeah, I don't know. We'll um, we'll assess that as we go along, but um, it would need to be fairly compelling to change what we think has been working for us at this stage. And Nathan, it's not only up forward that you've had uh, some key players missing down in the defence as well. How important has your team's adaptability been so far this year? Um, yeah, I th we probably haven't been challenged quite as much as you know the back end of last year, for instance. But I think it's more a mentality than than anything else. The, the capability builds from the belief that guys can come in and play a role at any given time, and and that um, yeah that they could be called upon at a moment's notice to come and fill that. So they've, 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 we've we've got 45 players we believe that, or the players that are uninjured that are. Believing that they could be called upon and ready to go at any at any um, any given moment, so um, the adaptability is important. Um, the belief uh, that what they bring to the table is significant is important, um, no matter what level it's at. And the fact that uh, every one of our players understands they've got strengths that that can make us better at, at different times. So I think that the mentality is as important as anything else, and and then we get the, you get the results off the back of that.
Tra- oh, sorry, Mitch. Travarco, walk up starter this week after missing last week. Yeah, well, he was fit. I don't need the medicos to tell me whether he can go or not, but um, he's, he's the, the closest like for like with Wellesley, um, so more than likely to play. And um, you yeah, would have loved to have had him in the side last week as well, but yeah, he's, um, he's paid his penance and, and uh, he'll be back for us. And just back on your defence box, the, the one player that's been there pretty consistently for you so far this year has been Jordan Ruffhead. Did you? Yeah. You, you wouldn't have anticipated when you brought him in that he might be the mm-hmm. defensive linchpin for you, but uh, he's played a, a really important role so far. Yeah, he's been really encouraging for us. We've, we've loved the way that he's gone about it, you know, on and off the field. Um, just a quality, quality character, quality individual, and um, yeah, as, as, and he's brought his strengths to the table. Obviously, very strong aerially. Um, very smart player with his positioning, very strong in his body work. So he's, he's, um, you know, I, he hasn't really lowered his colours at any stage. Most of the one-on-ones, he's been able to get his job done and then, and then help the blokes either side of him. So, um, you know, when you recruit someone, you're always hoping for the best and seeing the best. Um, but we go into things with our eyes wide open and. Um, and Jordan, you know, hadn't played consistent footy at AFL level for a couple of years, injuries and form. So, you know, what we've um, what we've seen from him is has been very good, and we look forward to more of that to come. You'd be happy to see a mid-season trade period rather than a draft. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't have an issue with it. I think the draft is good. And I think the trade, you know, nearly becomes inevitable. But if we're going to do it, let's do it. Um, I think it just adds to the to the player movement and the the capacity of clubs to adapt to what they need to to contend or to compete. Um, yeah, this is a long way. From, the mid season is a long way from national draft and and you know with nine ten rounds of evidence um, and injuries, it's um, it's probably it's only it's probably adds to the fairness in some ways that clubs can have a the the tool to be able to. Yeah, you know, bring someone in that they think might add to the the mix, and as long as every eight, every one of the eighteen clubs has that capacity, well, that's that's what could be fairer than that. From the outside at the moment, it seems like you're you're winning, but perhaps not playing your absolute mm. best footy. But what are your sort of key indicators telling you at the moment? Oh, I think we're playing well, um, because you you don't win without playing well, because the the competition's fierce. Um, but we we don't think that we're knocking it out of the park either so it's we, we see that there's plenty of improvement in us but we're you know we're pretty content with the way that we are backing up week after week um but yeah it's it's a long season and we're you know we're um we're not even halfway through it so we still feel like there's a there's a lot of growth in us and and that um but we've got plenty of upside in in what we're bringing to the table and that's uh, reason to be optimistic for, for us and our supporters. Is that sometimes just the time of year it is that you've just got to chalk them up how you can? Uh, well, I don't think there's a bad time to chalk them up. <laughs> um, so this time of year is as good as any. Um, yeah, we're going to have a, uh, a really stiff test this week. You know, Fremantle, really well balanced side, running hard, defending really well. Um, and starting to yeah, get that bounce off the back half, so you don't uh, you don't ever lack for, for tests or challenges when you when you're at this level. And um, you know, we see this as a as a as a really stern test of, of what we're capable of against an opposition that you know that are level at five and five, but could could well be you know, at seven or eight wins. Um, so we um, we see this as a uh, as a real challenge for us and one that we're looking forward to. The way you're finishing games the last three weeks has been pretty strong. Do you put that down to anything in particular that you might have changed this season? Uh, no, I think it's a bit of belief. Um, a belief that you, you can get the job done when, it, when you need to. And, and some of that um, you know, comes circumstantially. You don't really want to be within a goal either way when you get to five minutes from a game, um, from the end of the game. Um, if we play a little bit more consistently through the middle, potentially we're not in those situations. But I think that... Um, I think that our players have a have a real strong belief in their capacity to, to get the basics done and the little things done right when the pressure is at its fiercest. So that's great validation for us, and we reinforce that the communication on field that is evident to get those things sorted and, and to get them action. So and also that physical and emotional resilience to be able to grind it out when it needs to when it needs to happen. Uh, really strong validation for us, and something that we you know you. Definitely love to build on that. And Taylor Adams missing the next two or three. We know how close he was last week. Did that get delayed because of how 
close and how hard he pushed last week? Um, well, we didn't think we'd see him before the bye when he initially injured yep. the, his adductor. And he was able to take um, some really strong strides. Everything that it was thrown at him, he was able to handle. And due to differing, you know, we had a couple of different opinions from um, from surgical advice. And you know, one of them was just to go for it. And Taylor wanted to hear that one. <laughs> so he did. Um, but in the end, we, we feel like we've, you know, we, you, you may have lost. We may have lost five or five or six days, which is actually going to be across the course of the buy anyway. So you know, there was there was nothing to lose and there was everything to gain. Tay had a real crack at it, you know, came up short, but then we decided that no, there's there's nothing to gain going any further. You know, rested up again and and um, look to come back on the other side of the buy. So there's no setback or anything like that. Oh, well, not a, not not a not as it stands with the initial diagnosis or the initial timing. Um, and then we had, a, we had a run it a little bit earlier, but then so we ended up going back to the initial, the initial planning, yeah. Nathan, it's only day two for him, but uh, how happy are you to have John Noble calling? This? Yeah, we I met John today and um, he looks pretty happy to be here, mate, as you'd, as you'd imagine. Um, young fellow who's you know, had his AFL dream intact for you know, who knows how long since he was a young fella. So to have that, this opportunity come about probably speaks to a little bit about that mid-season um, draft and the other side of it. You know, you look at you know maybe player movement, or whatever. But there's there's um, you know, a handful of young blokes that actually get to live their dreams now and have, and walk into an environment like this and get a chance to have a crack. So John, um, <clears throat> you know, John will take the next couple of days to settle in, probably the next couple of weeks to settle in, and then we'll get an understanding of who he is, how he goes about it, and he'll get an understanding of us and. He's one of us now, so we'll see um, how we can bring his strength to the table as well. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, guys.